Happy Tuesday. Good to see all of your lovely faces. We'll go ahead with a few announcements and uh, then we'll get started rolling into Tuesday talk. So go ahead, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm not seeing too many name tags out there. Hey. <laughs> I hope you get as many pendants, too. At this point, if I don't know your name, it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not just for you, it's all the new people That's coming right. in, too. Yeah. I have a couple of announcements this morning. Johanna, you want to begin? Of course. It's Johanna is MVP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, this is about an outside. Uh, you need to see me better in this way? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about Francis Wilson Playhouse, and to any of you who have not been here, it has been here 94 years. And on their brochure it says, Tampa Bay's favorite community theater. And it is my favorite community theater. Any of you who went to see Beauty and the Beast that they did at the uh, close of the last season, knew that it just blew you away. There were about 35 people on their very small stage and their costumes were rented. They were copies of Disney's uh, movie, Beauty and the Beast, and the voices were terrific. Um, we're gonna see six musicals. I'm not asking you to buy a subscription, but I do have a sign-up sheet. You may pick and choose which one you want to go to. There's a sign-up sheet on each information desk and it is under January or July um, trips. So uh, the brochures will also be there to explain what it is. It's $28 to go to it, that's our group rate. And um, we'll be going on the bus on a Sunday afternoon. And the show is at two o'clock, we'll leave here about one and back by dinner time, five o'clock. Musicals take a long time and there's an intermission too. But the bus fare is $10, it's put on your bill. So I hope you're interested in seeing these. Sign up now so I have an idea of how many are going. Thank you, Ms. Johanna. Robin, you got an update on Flycra? Yes, Of course. Oh, sorry, I saw it. Good morning, everybody. I am here to encourage you to sign up for our July 29th trip to Sarasota for the Flycra annual meeting. Now, we say annual, but this is the first time in three years, at least, that we've had an opportunity to do something specifically in our region, and we have a bus going. This is, this is for new people and people who've been around here for a long time. What it is, is an opportunity, for, you won't find an easier opportunity to find out what the laws are that affect you in continuing care communities and how, how that applies to you specifically at Regency Oaks. There are 12 uh, CCRCs Flycra CCRCs in this region, of which four of them are managed, well, three of them that are uh, Flycra units and one other uh, is an LC, LCS property. We have a lot of company down there with common interests and uh, opportunities, and I hope that you will take advantage for this quick, easy way to ride down there and learn and bring that information back to the community to encourage you to do it. Your local Flycra chapter will pay the $18 admission fee for each of you. All you'll have to pay for is the $10 for the bus. The sign-up sheets are in both lobbies. I hope to see it full today. We can take a total of 20 people. Thank you. What time? Oh, the good news. <laughs> 5 a.m. <laughs> that, that may be when you get up, <laughs> but the bus will depart no later than 7.30 in the morning, that morning, okay? But you'll be back for dinner, okay? 
Does anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, how long does it last and what is the agenda? I have the agenda is posted on both trip tables. Okay? The agenda was something I gave you yesterday in the Flyker meeting. I know what it is, but I'm, I'm asking for those that don't. Oh, okay. All right. The, the agenda is specifically spelled out on the tables. What we'll do is meet each other. Uh, we will uh, go over in some detail the legislative updates, the things that happened this year that will affect you, have affected you, are going to affect you in a continuing care community. You, you can learn this as independent livers and bring it back and tell the rest of us about it. Uh, we will then be talking about uh, the efforts on, at the community level to focus on issues that we're all concerned with and might want to work together on, as well as how to effectively work within our own communities to affect change that's specific to us. We'll have roundtable discussions and, uh, and more. Good fellowship, good food, a beautiful community that we've never seen before, and it's never going to get easier than it is this time. Any other questions? Thank you, Robin. I suggest you get on the bus and find out how they work to protect us. Thank you, sir. All right, any other questions or feedback about that topic? Okay, so we'll go ahead and get into Tuesday talk and a little bit of updates. Okay, so with IHS, uh, they are doing their puzzle drawing next week for your hour of uh, free service. If you have not submitted it, uh, there are extra flyers in their office in 105. And I just wanted to give them a shout out and uh, thank you all for supporting our program. Regency Oaks was actually top of our leaderboard for our portfolio again in May for top revenue. So there are 13 other communities and uh, of course um, the Innovative Home Services program is part of our community. Uh, it's a budgeted area, it's a, it's a program uh, revenue generating of course and expenses and uh, we were the top. So in our portfolio, so thank you again for supporting our program and uh, thanks to our fantastic associates, Christine and Maddie, who do a great job of managing that program. Resident services, uh, we have made an offer to our new resident services director, as I have been mentioning, her name is Kelly Clark. If all goes as planned, she will start June 28th. So she'll have some training. We'll probably send her to another sister community. Uh, we'll have Beth Griggs, our corporate support, come out and train her, and we'll get her acclimated to our team. So um, we'll continue giving updates about that, but uh, we'll get her going, and we're currently processing her, um, her employment. In the meantime, if you, as you have been, have been doing a great job, if you have any concerns, please do see Christine or Carol. So thank you guys again for all your patience uh, during the time we didn't have that position filled. We don't have any COVID updates at the moment, so we're doing good. I'm hoping to keep it that way throughout the summer and uh, hopefully during flu season as well. But um, as of now, we have zero cases to report on. Employee of the month was actually a home health aide, Mrs. Natasha Hurd. Natasha was recognized for assisting a resident in distress and taking action quickly to ensure the resident's safety. We appreciate Natasha's dedication. Just a couple housekeeping updates. Uh, the team has successfully detailed the North dining room, and that included polishing of the railings, dusting the chandeliers, and individually detailing the light bulbs, detailing of the window seals, and the decor inside the cubbies. Um, he said significant efforts were shifted from the upholstery cleaning to floor care. So that's been a major focus. Uh, we've got some photos to show of some of the efforts from our housekeeping team. It's made a huge difference. 
Upholstery cleaning was delayed due to the extent of the floor cleaning that was performed. They do plan to get back on track with that cleaning as soon as possible. Uh, but they did go through and do all the tiled flooring uh, and steam cleaning for that. So, uh, and then they deep cleaned the refuse room. So Evan was pretty proud of the team and that they look fantastic. So we just wanted to show a couple photos of before and after. So this was the tile over here, kind of before the project. And then you can kind of see the before and after on that top right. And then the after, so it can show you a significant uh, difference from just getting in there and steam cleaning that area. So they made a fantastic uh, improvement. These, unfortunately, to report was are some of our refuse rooms. So we've been focusing on those and getting our processes in place to where they don't look like little dumpster sites. And we've got some before photos and after photos. So just kind of some of our continued efforts. We like to show exactly what our team is working on and focusing on outside of cleaning your homes. We've got 40 acres here in our community, lots of nooks and crannies, lots of rooms, lots of areas. So it really, really does take a village uh, in our housekeeping team. And uh, these photos are, are pretty indicative of their hard work and dedication to you and making your home look lovely. Food and beverage updates, uh, they're going to be heading out to the um, local brewery today for Beer Club, uh, Old Smart Brewery. I imagine some of y'all in here would be going. Uh, just a couple updates with their staffing. Uh, they are, of course, still focused on our grand opening event, and we'll go into some more information on that later. But they've actually hired three new back-of-the-house associates. They've recently promoted Jackie to a manager. We do have a lead cook that they're working with and training into being a sous chef uh, that looks very promising. They have had many new servers just now finishing training. And um, just an FYI, on Monday and Tuesday, Ricky, Johnny, and Phil will be out there going to be at the Cheney Food Show in Fort Lauderdale. I was supposed to attend with them and our, uh, some of our corporate food and beverage team but we have a lot going on next week, so I will not be attending. So just a little update on sales. We are still recruiting for our sales director position. Uh, we really are looking for the perfect candidate, so it's it's been in our um, perspective that we don't just want to fill that. So it has been taken some time to find a qualified candidate, but it's important to us to find the right candidate. So in the meantime, we still continue to have corporate support. Uh, that's here multiple times throughout each week that's helping us uh, with that process. But um, just some really exciting stuff. I mean, in quarter one, uh, we had 15 sales. So that's 15 new move-ins, 15 new friends, 15 new neighbors. And in Q2, we have 15 uh, sales as well. So again, just a huge thank you to our ambassadors. Um, we know that you're monumental in that process and in supporting a lot of those uh, and all the residents that take part in uh, that process. But also, we have implemented, I mentioned it many Tuesday talks ago, but we have implemented a program uh, where they can leave feedback post visits. And I'm proud to report that Regency Oaks is actually top in our portfolio for our positive experience feedback post visit. So we continue to get those emails as a portfolio, actually as a company, uh, and Regency Oats continues to stick out for the Health Peak portfolio on the positive experience post-visit. So uh, we're just pretty proud of that. So I wanted to point that out. A little bit of updates from Plant Ops. We are, as you can see, completely destroying the entire front of our property. Doesn't it look beautiful for our visit today? <laughs> Uh, we are um, kind of finalizing that. It will be done this week. We are, just so everybody is aware, um, I mentioned it before, but we are doing this as a requirement for our lender. Um, it's one of the things that we have to do. So fortunately, that is what it is. We are starting it in sections and quarters. So uh, this year, we'll complete this first part, and then we'll go into the other portions of the community at a later date. 
We will be completed by this Friday. Uh, they showed up hot and heavy first thing yesterday morning, tearing the place up. So we apologize in advance. It's unavoidable, not much we can do. It's a necessary evil that we have to complete. Uh, talked a little bit about um, touch up and uh, the cadence of our preventative maintenance with um, Chris yesterday. We do have a quarterly touch up paint uh, process um, on schedule and that is completed by Florida Pro Tech Painting. So they completed it about a month or so ago. We have them coming out every quarter. So we'll continue to identify areas uh, that need to be addressed. And if there's any feedback, you can most certainly let us know. Um, but we will continue that process and we do have that in place. Excuse me. <clears throat> Darwin did attend last week a uh, PTAC kind of maintenance director in plant ops uh, job fair. Uh, they did um, kind of meet probably about four or five qualified candidates. So we are working on recruitment for those positions still. In the meantime, I don't want us to think that we're short three guys. I've heard that we're short X amount of guys. We are still facilitating work orders. We're just simply contracting that out to any of our vendors. CDS is helping us, housekeeping's helping us, security's helping us, as well as anything from HVAC. We've seen our dear Arlie here quite frequently. We just thought he left. <laughs> um, so we've been, we've still been managing um, just because we are, you know, a couple actual on-site team members. We have still been managing the process by outsourcing and utilizing our resources as a team and with our vendors. Again, just kind of back to the paving, that was the first go around, so thank you all, and we're sorry about the, the necessary inconvenience. So again, we'll be done Friday. We need a sign out front. We, it's out there, Darwin put it out this morning. Good. Yes, ma'am, put it out there this morning. So we have two outliers. We're trying to locate the owners of these two vehicles. If they're yours, you can excuse yourself and repark them. <laughs> but we really just wanted to make sure we can get them out of the way. It is heavy dust and uh, possible rocks, so we wanted to get those relocated a little bit further away. So if you know whose vehicles those are, we have been uh, working on that. Otherwise, we will safely tow them out of the way. So again, we just wanted to take extra precaution from any type of flying rocks uh, or dust. So um, nonetheless, we can get them moved. We'll just safely tow them if you don't recognize that car. You don't have to tell us. Yes, we're aware. And these are two outliers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have not been able to locate. We couldn't hear what they said. They said they should have a sticker and we have all the license plates, but these are two that we do not. So we are still working with AV specialists on the equipment. They were here all last week, so they've made quite significant. I'm sorry. We've made quite significant progress uh, on those other aspects. Uh, still, of course, waiting on the speakers, but they were out here the majority of last week, so uh, we're on a good track to getting that completed. Probably not by grand opening, but very close after. Bay Area Stage and Lighting will actually help provide temporary lighting for our event. The standard lighting that they are going to be installing uh, over the stage is still in progress and on track. We again are still working with Direct Supply on a ramp for that town hall. I spoke to them again this morning, so they'll have some options for me. As you can see, they're kind of coming to an end, making great progress on the sprinklers and the breezeway, and that should be completed by this week. So they've enclosed all of them, and they'll just spend the rest of this week finalizing the enclosure and painting those uh, soffits. Schaefer, Tim is his name, is the uh, head of uh, construction. He was actually out last week doing another punch just because it's taken so long. We did another punch just to address all final areas, any touch-up pain, any things that have um, kind of gotten out of whack since, um, since their last punch. So we'll have one final one so we can kind of cross our T's and dot our I's and button that area up. 
support team. Um, they should have already reimbursed all damaged items. Please let us know if there's anything outlining. Um, but to our knowledge, they should be complete from our little storage fiasco there. Uh, again, they're finishing the last final units. They'll be auditing all the units, and then we'll be moving into the decorating of the uh, Grand Hobby North and the fifth floor. So more to come for that. That's said Grand Lobby South. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Did it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, look at me. I can't get it right. <laughs> Thank you. Pardon my mistake. Grand Lobby North. Emergency preparedness. Um, we wanted all of those forms turned in yesterday. Please get those to us. We will be presenting on a disaster plan uh, like we do every year. We'll do a presentation as to what exactly our plan looks like, and we'll get that date out uh, soon. We will be having a 2024 budget kickoff call. I can't believe it's almost that time in the next few weeks. I don't know much more than that. It's just our initial very beginning call with the corporate team, and then we'll start moving into that process. As I mentioned a couple times probably, we do have an asset visit with Peak and CBRE, our asset management today, this afternoon. Uh, we have reached out to a few of you that they were wanting, that they identified in areas they were just going to briefly enter. So uh, if you've heard from us, that pertains to you. If you have not heard from us, that does not pertain to you. Uh, we will be rolling out the 2023 resident survey process and kick off in August as well. So again, more information to come on that, uh, but we've started that, pro that process. And unfortunately, Friday brought some very unfortunate news. Our Vicki is no longer with us. She did depart um, abruptly, unfortunately. So uh, Sherry will have to recruit for her replacement. Unfortunately, she did get a fantastic job offer. She could not refuse, and they offered to pay her out. So that's the truth. That's the transparent. That's what happened. So uh, she is no longer with us as of Friday. So I always like to be pretty honest about that. So you don't think we're just running everyone off. <laughs> okay, so grand opening, our big party. Uh, again, we mentioned we have the two seatings at two to four. Then we have a two hour and then six to eight. Uh, we will have the open bar in the main entrance. Uh, Mrs. Johanna has been absolutely wonderful and instrumental in this process, so thank you. Because uh, we, we probably were not able to undertake such a process with everything else, so thank you. Uh, so she's been managing the assigned seating and the set, whether you're at the two to four or the six to eight. Again, I'm sorry. We will be, uh, let's see, assigned seat. We will be valeting assisted devices. Um, we want to make sure that we've got plenty of room and everyone can get around really well. So we will have them in our back offices. Uh, we will bring you the majority of the things you need. We will have directors assigned to sections. So we really want you to just kind of sit down and enjoy yourself as much as possible. Um, you most certainly can get up if you need to. Uh, but we will be needing to valet those devices. So just FYI. Again, the food and beverage team will be passing heavy appetizers. It will have open bar. This is residents only because of the um, large response. We do have the occupancy of 211 max, which is why we're doing the two seatings. Um, so that's unfortunately the fire marshal's rules. Nothing we can do. So it is residents only. Entertainment uh, is Johnny. He actually really wanted to do this for you guys, for you all. We talked about um, various uh, different bands and, and you know, we kind of talked with Ginger and Johnny said, you know, I really want to do this for them. So it's going to be a long day for him. He probably won't have a voice afterwards, but he will be entertaining over 300 um, of our residents and team members that day. So uh, he's looking forward to it and he's uh, pretty excited about it. We also have another surprise entertainment, I'm not telling you, I know you want to know, but um, it'll be a surprise, it'll be a wonderful surprise that Ricky's worked really hard on, so I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I, of course, we will not have a full itinerary, this is a party, okay, it's a cocktail party, so um, we'll do a brief welcome, tell everybody thank you for being here. 
Uh, I am hoping Brant does plan to attend. I take no credit for that town hall area. So Brant will be here and um, I would like him to kind of say a little bit and then probably uh, Joe Sorensen or Sherry. Uh, so just kind of quick words. Again, it's a party, not a program or not a seminar. And uh, we'll say hello and kick off the music and the drinks. Other than that, I do want to remind you, dress to impress, we will have a photo backdrop and we will be taking pictures. So the invitation does say dress um, formal, nice suits, nice dresses, and just come looking spectacular. So we'll have great photos. Um, we're working real hard on a beautiful photo backdrop. And uh, we really just want to make a, a fantastic uh, party for you guys, for you all. Okay. Uh, as far as activities this week, Wednesday the 21st, 2.30, in the now with RO in the breezeway. Excuse me. Wednesday, June 21st, 3 p.m., Great Courses featuring Winston Churchill, Grand Lobby South. Friday, June 23rd, 2 p.m., is My Life Experience, Martin Schechter, Grand Lobby South. And then Friday the 24th at 7 p.m., we'll have a violinist, David Predaza, in the Grand Lobby South. So just a reminder, check your tables for upcoming restaurant and museum trips. Okay, just a few, thank you for that, Betsy, I was looking for that, that photo. Just a few reminders, you guys have, you all, y'all, you all, <laughs> or if you said don't call them you guys, I said don't call them, it's so hard. Y'all, um, so you always come to me and you mention to our teams, I get emails, I get stopped, of uh, just really wonderful things about various team members or about various experiences. Please do utilize our boxes, the Extraordinary Impressions boxes that are at the front of each of our desks, as well as in our dining rooms. Um, we really, so we utilize those for numerous uh, reasons. First, they are the Life Care Services signature program for how we acknowledge our associates. It's actually a proprietary program to Life Care Services. And it enables us to not only have a legitimate process in place uh, for recognition, um, it also helps derive the employee of the month a, as well as enables to reward them with um, monetary prizes and experiences. And um, so when you fill those out, that only gives them points, but that gives them uh, potential to be employee of the month as well as additional recognition. I had just kind of, these are some of the photos of the actual site. And these are all the things that we can go on there and buy from the points that we get from that recognition. So anytime you say something, put that on a card in those boxes, and that helps our associates to not only be recognized, but they can turn that into gifts and fun stuff to buy. So I pulled that directly from our Extraordinary Impressions website. You can see there's anything from Apple Watches to makeup to different shopping trips, electronics, fashion, uh, perfume, and experiences. So. I really like to make sure that we remind you as well as educate our new residents on that program because it is our life care services way that uh, we recognize our associates. So just a reminder. All right, so that's all the updates I have for you today. Not too much, huh? So if you'd like, I will answer a couple questions. And like I said, we'll have our uh, peak visit later on today. They're going to enter some vacant units, some occupied units if we've called you, as well as, of course, tour some of our main areas. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Hannah. This is not a question. This is a compliment. Um, I want to finish on a high note here. Uh, when we had to put sprinklers in outside, uh, and all that ugly piping out there, I want to compliment the carpentry work that went around it. It's not just a simple box. There are some added features to it. So when you look up, you have no idea that there's uh, a, an additional plumbing that was put on afterwards. Right. It looks very nice. That's right. I agree, absolutely. Yes, Ms. Judy? What is the situation now with the uh, 
pilots in the new town hall that don't meet ADA, uh, ADA standards. They're only 15 inches tall. ADA standards are 17 to 19. So I actually spoke with Tim and construction about it. There is a handicap stall in each one that does. The other ones do not, but they have to have at least one that does. So they did check into that and they did confirm that we are in compliance. Oh, we, we can't use them. But can we over in compliance? Yes. I hear you. That's something we can look into in the future. Understood. It's something we can look into in the future, changing those out. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Roger, yes. Uh, I'm curious about this. Uh, as we see the work going on out there, uh, what was the bid cost for the repaving of that part of the parking system? I would have to pull those numbers again. We have done it in sections. We can, we can report on that in the next financial meeting in the CapEx. That was done in sections, so it was divided out. Second observation is the front porch where a lot of people like to sit, uh, don't sit there right now because it's just dirty with asphalt dust, and it needs to be hosed down. Once they get through grinding, Absolutely. even if they're putting it down, I think it'll be okay, but grinding has just made a big dust mess out there. Absolutely. We will most certainly do that. Thank you. Thank you. Taking notes. I see you, Bill. Yes, sir. Um, given the fact that there's not one sign posted for this entire campus during this uh, milling and repaving, I was wondering, uh, has Clearwater Fire and EMS been notified as to what to do? And how to get into this place and how to get to the doors. Has any plan been followed with them? So I will follow up with Darwin on that. I do know that there was paperwork that was submitted to the city. I can get you uh, more details about that. Thanks. I'm Rosa. I think the actual doors into the new town hall need magnets to hold them open so people can get in easier. Which side? Johanna, this is a question for you. How are we going to find out our confirmation of time and so forth for the, for the gala. It's my plan to send a note to everyone to let you know what table number you have and what seating you are. And if my hand holds out and my other friends, uh, we will list all the people who will be sitting at your table so you're well aware of what's going on. Thank you. Any other questions? The status of the air conditioning in the dining room south? Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. It's hot, hot? Okay. I've asked Darwin a couple times and I've been told that it's been addressed. So are you saying it's still hot? Well, yes. I didn't eat there last night, but it sure was on Sunday and it has been that way for a while. Have we notified the front desk since yes. Sunday? Yes. I okay. Did. Every time I ask, I'm assured that we're back up to temperature by multiple food and beverage as well as maintenance. So we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. We'll have a beautiful Tuesday. We'll follow up on these items. Thank you for bringing them to my attention.